Welcome back. In this Python Pandas tutorial, we're going to go over several examples of how you can work with dates and times. For the imports, we're going to use datetime, pandas, numpy, and the Vega datasets. For the first example, we have created a date range. To create our date range, we use pandas dot date range. Then we put in the start date and the end date. We run it. We have our date time index with all of the dates going from January 1st, 2016 to January 31st, 2016. Now, you can take that date range and add it to a data frame. So here we have created a data frame. We put in the dates and some other data. If we run it, you can see we have our data frame with the dates column and the data. If you would like to make your dates column here, the index, like this, one way you can do that is to use your data frame dot set index. And then you put in the name of the column. And of course, in this case, since we want to set the dates to the index, we put in dates. Let's go ahead and run it. The dates column is now the index. In this example, we're going to take an existing dates column and take the day name from that column and add it as a new column. So we're going to use this column here and extract the day name and add it as a new column here. So we're going to go ahead and use this data frame here. Then we specify the new column name. We reference our data frame and we reference the dates column. Then we use dot dt, which is a date time accessor. Then we use dot day name. Let's run it. Here it has extracted the day names from this date and put them into the new column. Also notice that if you want to see the data types, you can reference your data frame dot d types. And you can see that the dates column here is a date time data type. Let's go over some more date range examples. In this example, we're going to create a date range for the year 2016. The frequency will be a type and the periods will be 31. This date range starts January 1st. Each date is a separate day, and the number of periods are 31, going to January 31st. Here we have another example. However, in this case, instead of a day frequency, we're going to use a month frequency. We start at January 1st, 2016, using the month frequency for 12 periods. And we run it. We get our period index here. And also notice, in these other examples, we used a date range. In this example, we used a period range. Now what we've done here is we have created a data frame using this period range and some random data. And we want to take the month from this date's column and add it as a text month description, like this. In order to do that, we create our new column, we reference our data frame, dot dates, then we use the dt date time accessor, and then we use the string from time. And for the month, we're going to use percent %b. Let's run it. And here we have our data frame. With our data, our dates column that was created using the period range here, and then we created a new column that shows us just the month from the dates column. You can also create a set of dates using the pandas dot date time index. Then you can put in a list of dates. And you can see we have created a small data frame using the date time index. Here. Next, let's go over another example where you extract parts of a date column to create new columns. In this example, we're going to use the weather data frame from the Vega datasets. So once again, we have created two new columns, the month number and the month text representation. Here's the month number. 
and here's the month. And in order to do that, we reference the date frame and we reference the date column here. Then we use the DT date time accessor and for the month number, we use dot month. And for the month name, we use month name. And you'll notice that this is a property and here we have used a function. Now real quick, let's go to the bottom of the notebook. We have two references. Here we have all of your DT date time accessor options. And here we have all of the common time series frequencies. And this notebook will be on GitHub so you can access these references if you would like. Okay, if you would like to import a CSV that has date times, one way you can do that is to use the pandas read CSV and then put in the path of where the file is. Now one thing you'll notice, if you look at the data types, when we first imported this as a data frame, the dates have an object data type. If you would like to convert that to a date time data type, you can use pandas to date time. And we'll go over some other examples of that here in just a little bit. So this is one way that you can convert your dates to a date time data type. And here you can see a sample of the example data frame that we pulled in from the CSV with the dates. Next, in this example, we're going to go over how you can aggregate your data using resample. We're going to go ahead and use the Vega Datasets Seattle Weather data frame. And you'll notice that we have set the date as the index here with this code. And what we want to do is to aggregate the data by year. So we go ahead and reference the data frame dot resample, and then here we use y for year. And we want to see the mean or the average. Let's run it. Here for the index, we have 2012 through 2015. Then for the precipitation, temperature, max, and min, and wind, we have the mean of all the data by the year. Next, let's go over a few examples of how you can filter your data frames by certain dates. Here, we've gone ahead and created our data frame. We have a column with the dates, and then two columns with some data. For the first example, we're going to filter the dates with a slice. So to do that, we reference our data frame. Then we go ahead and we set the index using the dates column. So we're going to use this column here and set it to the index like this. Then we go ahead and we use the square brackets with the slice syntax. And what we want to do is to include dates from March 26, 2016 to April 15th, 2016. Let's run it. And you can see we have March 26th through April 15th. And that's the only data that's included. So that's one way that you can take a slice of your data. Another thing that you can do is you can use truncate, which is somewhat similar to the slice. We've gone ahead and created a data frame, which is just a copy of our slice data frame. Once again, we reference the data frame. Then we use set index, setting the index using the dates column. Then we use dot truncate and we put in the before dates and the after dates. In this case, we're going from April 18th, 2016 to May 5th, 2016. Let's run it. The data included includes only the dates that we set here, April 18th through May 5th. Next, here we have another example in this case, we're going to use a Boolean type filter. And what we want to do is to include dates greater than December 15th, 2016. So we go ahead and we reference our data frame. Then we use dot loc, which will access the rows by label. Then in the square brackets, this will be the criteria for the rows. Then we use a comma and a colon 
and this will include all columns. So for the row criteria, here we reference the dates data frame column. And we want any of those dates that are greater than or equal to December 15th, 2016. And to specify that date, we use pandas dot to date time. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that our data frame includes dates that are greater than or equal to December 15th, 2016. Here. Okay. So now let's go over to date time. And basically, this will allow us to put in dates in different formats and convert them to date times. So here we have a series of dates. And to create the dates, we use pandas to date time. Then inside the round brackets, we use a pandas series. And you'll notice that the dates are in different formats. However, when we run it, we get the dates interpreted correctly in a date time format. Then here we have an example where we have added those dates to a data frame that we created here. Next, in this example, we're going to go over how you can show certain dates. In this case, we want to show custom business days. So the first thing we've done is we have created a week mask. And these will be the days that will be shown, which are Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Then we go ahead and we use pandas dot b date range we go ahead and we put in our start date and our end date and for those we use date time for the frequency we use c which is a custom business day frequency then for the week mask argument we go ahead and we assign this data here let's go ahead and run it and you can see what's shown will be the tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays in between our start and end dates here. Next, let's go over some different ways that you can perform calculations with dates. Here we've gone ahead and created our data frame. We just have some dates and some data. One of the first things you might like to do is to see the max date and the min date. To do that, you can reference your data frame and the dates column. Then you use dot max for the max and dot min for the min. So in the data frame that we created, the max date is December 31st, 2016, and the min date is January 1st, 2016. Here we have an example of how you can add time to get a new date. So here we've gone ahead and created a date using the pandas timestamp. The date is January 31st, 2016. So we wanna go ahead and take that date and then we want to add 81 days to it and see what the new date will be. So in order to do that, we use the pandas time delta. So we use the timestamp plus the time delta. And the time delta is 81 days. So what that will do is it will take this date here and add 81 days. Let's run it. 81 days from January 31st, 2016 will be April 21st, 2016. Here we have another example where you can create two dates and then you can subtract them to get a time delta. In this case, we have the same days, but we have two different times. And you can see that the difference is one hour. So we take the later date and we subtract the earlier date. Let's run it. And for the time delta, we get one hour. Next, let's go over a few examples of how you can calculate time units within time units. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to see the total seconds in one hour. To do that, we use pandas dot time delta. Then we go ahead and we put in one hour. Then we use total seconds. In this example, we use the time delta. However, in this case, we'll put in two days, one hour, and five minutes. Then we're going to divide that with another time delta of one minute. And in this case, we want to see the total minutes in this period of time. And for the last example, we want to see the total hours in 365 days. 
We use the time delta, 365 days, divided by the time delta of one hour. Let's go ahead and run it. So we can see that the total seconds in one hour is 3,600. The total minutes in this period of time here is 2,945. And the total hours in 365 days is 8,760. Okay, that's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.